Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Nobody Asked Me Guy Show. Guys, listen, it's great to have you on board tonight. Glad you're here. Let me give a special shout out uh, to a long lost dear friend. I say long lost. I hadn't seen him in a while. Brother Gerald Eddings, we're, we're glad that you're here and you're on board. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I, I see I have some new guests tonight. I'm happy about that. And I know that uh, you're all waiting to see Daryl Triplett. Uh, Daryl is on his way. As you know, we're doing everything virtually. And Daryl will be signing in momentarily. I'm your host, uh, Melvin Casey Lars. And as you know, this is a Nobody Asked Me Guy show. And you know, we don't do anything here traditional. We just kind of do what we do. So tonight, we will be talking with uh, Brother Daryl Triplett, who's an artist extraordinaire. And uh, Brother Triplett, as you will hear as I read, read you some of his information here, uh, was an All-American. And he's out of New Orleans, Louisiana. Uh, played at uh, not only Grambling State University, but he also played at Highland Community College in Kansas, uh, where he was an All-American in high school and in college. Now, Brother Daryl Triplett is a, a, a currently a Monroe, uh, Louisiana native. He's married to Michelle A. Triplett. They are the proud parents of Ryan, Jared, and Alundria Triplett. Now, all are adults now. Triplett holds a Bachelor's of Science uh, from Grambling State University in Arts Education, as well as he holds his Master's from Grambling as well in Arts and Humanities. And he holds a Master's plus 30 uh, from Louisiana University of Louisiana Monroe. Now, he's a very talented artist, uh, and he's taught in the Monroe Public Schools for 28 years. He's also an adjunct professor at Delta College, and he's been an adjunct professor at Delta College since 2008. Now, guys, the former New Orleans All-American football player, you know, we told you coming in that Daryl Triplett is an All-American uh, football player, and uh, he's coming in uh, momentarily. But now, Daryl uh, also played for the great Eddie Robinson at Grambling State University. Uh, he has many influences in his life, but he tells us very succinctly that the New Orleans arts and music scenes have remained a major influence uh, as an artist. So, uh, and obviously we can all understand that. We know how, how hot New Orleans is. I see Brother Triplett has joined us and we're gonna continue uh, sharing some of his information as he gets ready. Uh, now his art has, has all flavors and spices. Uh, of a good pot of gumbo, <laughs> which all of us Louisiana guys and uh, Southerners understand about that Southern cuisine. Now, Brother Triplett is also a world traveler. Uh, he's been fortunate enough to travel to Switzerland, to Paris, to London, uh, Rome, Venice, and Florence. Now, Brother Triplett is, is, uh, has many exhibits, and he's done exhibits uh, in Maryland, Atlanta, uh, locally in Shreveport, Louisiana, Baton Rouge, just to name a few. Uh, he also did a uh, was at the Essence Festival in New Orleans. And just recently, guys, uh, before the pandemic hit, he was also doing a art show presentation uh, at the Bayou Classic, uh, just uh, again, with between Grambling and Southern. So uh, Brother Triplett is well-traveled, he's well-healed, and he's done so, so many things. Now also, uh, he, he, his most famous painting was of the New Orleans Saints Super Bowl. And uh, I can attest personally that I know Brother Triplett uh, was able to present a personal copy of that painting to our now governor, John Bell Edwards. And John Bell Edwards was so proud and so happy to receive that painting. He hung it in his private suite uh, there at the Superdome. So uh, Brother Triplett is, 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 is quite the artist. Now, uh, Triplett has had several public and private exhibits over the past uh, few years. And he credits former president of Southern University, Dr. Leon Tarver, with helping him expand his artistic presence uh, throughout the South and the nation. Now, uh, he and Dunson Coney also traveled to Washington, D.C. Uh, to do an art exhibit and a symposium, and they plan to make that an annual event. Mr. Darrell Triplett, so great to have you with us this evening, sir. Thank you, sir. Can you hear me? I hear you perfectly fine. Very good. Thanks for having listen, me. Listen, listen, it's our pleasure to have you. And uh, I, we have been sharing with our audience all of the accolades. And I, I do want to say to the young people that we have on here, you know, people love to talk about student athletes. And sometimes they don't understand the, the gist of that. And that's not the show tonight. But I just do want to share with them is that not only were you an All-American in high school and college, uh, that you and, and we've said, if they were not listening closely enough, Brother Triplett, 
uh, that you not only have uh, various degrees, uh, you have multiple degrees beyond uh, uh, your BS, you have your master's, you have your plus 30, et cetera. And we want our athletes to hear that. But listen, let's just jump right into this thing. Now, you know, Brother Triplett, many people, when we, when we talk about art, and I being one of them, you know, probably the best I can do is draw a stick figure. <laughs> and, and we know that a lot of times, uh, you know, and, and I know that that you taught art in the Monroe City Schools for 28 years and, and that kind of thing. And, you know, people talk about different styles and different brands and that kind of thing. If you could well, share with us a little bit about various styles of art, uh, as, it, as it were, uh, so, so that we laymen can understand. Okay, sure. Um, you mentioned that you can't draw a stick person with a uh, pencil. Well, actually, if you can write your name, the moment you pick up that pencil and start scribbling in a sheet of paper or the floor or the desk, or wherever it was, you was actually creating art. And let me prove that to you, that everybody has art, talent, and skills. If you, if you were to draw a straight line horizontal, and you draw a straight line vertical, those lines mean something. And let me tell you how important those lines are. What I tell my students when I was teaching at the university, if you go into the hospital and you see that heart monitor and it's beeping like this, beep, 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 those are nothing but lines, vertical lines, right? Those lines tell you whether or not your heart is beating or not. So that one line, means so much. It means life or beep. When that line go like that, horizontal, that means you gone. And that artist designed that machine just to let the doctors know that your heart was beating or it's not. So those real stick men means a whole lot in art. See, you do have some skills. You just got to understand what those lines mean. So lines of life means a heck of a lot. Now, now, I appreciate your kindness, <laughs> but I still can only draw stick figures. <laughs> you got to start somewhere, Mr. Lars. <laughs> yes, sir. Brother Triplett. Yes. Your resume, and, and I call our biographies resumes, mm -hmm. bios resumes. Yes. Your resume has already indicated that your, your largest influence uh, as, it, as it pertains to your colors and drawing and, and uh, situations of such uh, when you really put your paint to canvas. What are some of the things that actually influence you to paint? We know that, that, that the, the impetus and the excitement comes from that, that gumbo that you talk about uh, in colors. Right. But what affects Daryl Triplett? and causes him to want to get that brush and put it to the canvas? You know, a lot of things, it's a great question, by the way. A lot of things inspire us as artists, and colors mean so much to everybody on this planet in some form or fashion. <clears throat> as I was growing up in New Orleans, we would go to the French Quarter. That was my second experience. And I want to mention that because most people are familiar with the French Quarter in New Orleans. And when, I, when we would go down there, on these educational journeys, some people call them field trips, but I was out, I was out there looking at those colors in the French Quarter where it was the, the, um, the, the street artists, the plants, the trees, the surroundings, this whole environment of New Orleans was vibrant and colorful. As a kid, that excited me. So that stuck in my head for years and years. And as a, as a matter of fact, I never knew what this fruit was. I guess it's a fruit. It's all a, all a, all a, pomegranate, I think it was called, but that thing so be the inside of it, they would open them up in the fresh quarters and it, and, it, and it looked good to eat and the colors was just so vibrant and that magenta just stood out and it just, it just fascinated me. And the second time as an adult, the first time I went to Hawaii, the, the colors was just mind boggling. You know, those, those blues, those phalo blues, the ultramarines, the colors of the rainbow, that was just different. You know, that's, that was, it was just fascinating to me. And when I go back to the canvas, 
I try to duplicate those colors that I've seen in nature. And I guess most artists do that, but that's what catches our attention. That's the challenge for us to try to duplicate the nature that God has given us to enjoy every day. And, and, and those are one of the, that's one of the reasons why I like to paint using acrylics because I can do it fast and those colors are real vibrant and you can tone them down, you can lift them up, you can smooth them out, do anything with those colors to make you feel good. And colors makes people feel good. And you know, speaking of colors, I, 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 I was reading your information here and I see where, where you were sharing that when you visited Hawaii, the, the, the colors were so vibrant until they gave you, I won't say a new perspective, but they, they, they excited you more. Can you share with us a little bit about that, please? Yes, it, 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 it is because if you were to go and travel on the uh, Pacific Ocean, and of course that's where it was, and out in that ocean is just the deep blue sea, as they say. We read books as children about the deep blue sea, you know, we down here in Louisiana, we see the Gulf Coast, and, and very seldom do we get outside of that realm. Or we go, we see the Red River, we see the Mississippi River. That's about as far as it went for 20, 30 years. But if you had a chance to travel and see the ocean, that water is actually a turquoise blue. And that is something that is mind-boggling because God made that. It's real. Nobody put those colors in there. You know, you can't put no any kind of chemicals in there and make that. That's the true color. It has everything to do with the signs and the, and the moon and the sun to create these colors that's in the water. So that blue, it, it was almost, you could almost touch it, but it was lit, lit, liquefied blue. It's water, but it's actually a turquoise blue. You know, so um, it had a profound effect on my psyche. You know, uh, it, it was a motivational tool for me to go back, try to duplicate these colors, try to mix these colors. And it's just something that I think everybody should experience. And as an artist, that's the ultimate, you know, that's the ultimate high. It, it takes you up, way up. You know, you're not on the same level of, of the creator, but it, it gives you an opportunity to at least experience the beauty that God has given us down here on earth. Wow. And with that stated, I know that, again, you've already shared with us that, that you feel your most famous painting is of the Super Bowl and Superdome when the New Orleans Saints were victorious. And of course, all of us uh, being Saints fans are very happy about that. However, <laughs> which of your paintings would you say is your, your personal favorite, if you have a personal favorite? No, it's, it's difficult to say uh, because it's kind of like one of your children. You know, it's almost like asking a parent, which one of your children you like the best? Uh, maybe you, you're biased toward one, toward the other. Um, I don't think I have a, a personal favorite. Each painting that I do, I try to do it better than the one I did before. And I'm always trying to learn. And this, this is the most important thing that I take away from art, is that it's a challenge. It challenges you from a, a, a mental perspective, emotional perspective, and a skill level perspective. Those things combined is one heck of a challenge. It's almost like going into a football game. You know you can, you got a tough opponent, but you got to try to find a way to beat that opponent. Sometimes you have to outthink him. Sometimes you may have to go through him. Sometimes you may have to go around it. But at, at all times you think it. And that's why even with this art deal, you have to try to think your way through this painting to make it to what you want it to be. And it's the same thing in sport. So I, I apply those, those principles in life and the elements and principles that we tend to follow down here in our regular life on a daily basis. Same thing applies in almost every field of human endeavor, including art. And so in art is one of those, those subjects, man, you, where now you see people spending millions and millions of dollars on art because they understand it's more than just paint on a sheet of paper or a canvas is actually scientifically implied and 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 you if you look at some of the great artists that I've experienced over in in Europe you know that worth billions of dollars and I mean literally billions of dollars for example that that Mona Lisa thing 
it, it has, I think, a $30 billion insurance policy. And so there's got to be something to this. Thing. But we do it for the most part because we love it. And each one of my paintings is a challenge for me. And I love all of my kids. <laughs> you know what? Uh, speaking of loving all of your kids, now I, I've observed two that I, I'm particularly drawn to as I'm drawn to all of them. But you have a, you have beautiful paintings of the Buffalo Soldiers, and you also have shown paintings where you have inlaid within those paintings the Louisiana boot. What inspired yes. you to do the Buffalo Soldiers as well as when you decided to, to do these other paintings and you have laid within them uh, the Louisiana boot, but they're not obvious? Can you share with us a little bit about that, please? Yeah. Um, as far as the Buffalo Soldiers are concerned, it is the paintings are meant to be an, an educational tool to teach our children. I used them when I was at the, at the high schools, the junior high schools, and even the colleges. You find out in the last 10 to 15 years, a lot of people wasn't familiar with the Buffalo Soldiers. So I think. In fact, I'm, I'm, I'm almost sure that even now, kids, you know, don't know what the buff who, the, who the Buffalo Soldiers were. These were a group of black soldiers really came about after the Civil War, after 1865. They were women from the, the Midwest or the West, out in Arizona, Texas, and California, places like that. And there were a few, of course, in Louisiana. Of course, now it, they've been embraced by nationwide by a whole group of people as the Buffalo Soldiers. And you have these several clubs. But those were the guys who actually were lead cavalrys back in that time. Like I said, after the Civil War, they didn't do much fighting during the Civil War, even though the, the, uh, the Massachusetts group and some groups down here and, and Millicans being in Louisiana and Shreveport and uh, Tallulah and places like that the War of 1812 down in Louisiana and New Orleans. They fought down there, but they weren't called Buffalo Soldiers at that time. And so what I do, I incorporate, yes, I incorporate the Louisiana booth in most of the paintings. And I started doing that after Hurricane Katrina. This painting I did, uh, I call it The Shape Louisiana is In. And I just put that Louisiana boot in there to kind of show people that Louisiana was going through some kind of struggles at that time, some real challenges faced a whole lot of, you know, Louisiana, and we affected the whole country because we were scattered like the, the Israelites back during the Bible days. You know, we were scattered all over the place. And so that Louisiana, that boot represents, that's where we came from. So I put it throughout the pieces that I, I still do that to this day with most of the paintings that I do. And it just became just one of my metiers. <laughs> very, very interesting. Now you say metier. You had to share that. You had to help... Help us come and lay persons out with that term. Oh, it's just one thing. It's in, in layman's term, metier is French word is just it's just what I do. You know, it's, it's almost like you know, Lars, you know, whatever your specialty is. You know, whatever you do, whatever you do, and you do it well. I said, well, listen, when you paint, you know, I know as a writer. I have a particular purpose in mind. Something sparks me to want to put pen to paper. Uh, something, many times it may be irritating or it may be something that I'm particularly proud of or it may be a message that I want to, to share and convey. When you paint, do you go through those emotions as well? Yes. Or yeah. yeah, no doubt about it. I can remember... Uh, you mentioned that I did the uh, the boots, and I did the the uh, Katrina deal. That was really emotional for me. And and remember, let's go back to 2001, when the United States was hit by the terrorists in New York, at uh, Shanksville, Pennsylvania, the World Trade Center, and and uh, the Pentagon. As an artist, I was emotionally touched by that event, just like everybody else. Was. And I did, I did a series of paintings on 9-11. I don't take them out of my oeuvre that often, my body of work. They're in my studio. 
But I exhibit those paintings right after that, 2001, for the first at Southern University of Baton Rouge. And the one painting, it was like the Mona Lisa. You walk into the Louvre and see the Mona Lisa, you got people lined up. But that painting was not meant to be a painting representing September 11, as most people call it now. We know what it is just because of the, the, the horrible event that took place that day. However, that painting was probably my most emotional piece I've ever done. That One of them is a total abstract. In fact, all of them are abstract, more or less. What I mean by abstract, they're pretty much, you know, non-objective work. You know, you can recognize the, the, some of the symbols that I do have in there, but it's, it's, it's a lot of colors, co colors, throughout a lot of textures. You know, you have these fiery, warm colors. You have this fiery, this, this explosion, all of this kind of stuff going on within the painting because that's what we experienced watching TV that day. But that painting was, was really tough for me to do. However, um, like I said, it just touched me so much that I was, I guess, in fact, I started at school. Whenever my, whenever my kids would finish their work and I would have time, I would kind of show them, I would demonstrate and model for them. And I would have a canvas somewhere around just kind of keeping my, my skill level up. So I started throwing this canvas, the paint on this canvas, and the kid was looking at me like, Mr. Trippett has lost his mind. But I was feeling something different that day. Because when that plant into that building, we was watching it with my kids in the classroom. And it was unbelievable. You know, it was almost like we was in a dream. So when I started painting that piece, it became, I became a part of that dream. As an artist, I'm expressing myself. So, so much so that I just felt like I needed to do that piece. It wasn't planned. I was actually painting something totally different but it turned into this piece. And I take it out every September. So perhaps I might take it out this September and see what happens. Wow, that's powerful. And you know what, Mr. Triplett, it brings me, I was fortunate enough to observe you at a fundraiser at uh, the president of Grambling State University, President uh, Richard Gallo. Yeah. And you were donating some of your paintings. And there was one particular painting as they were auctioning the painting off. This young lady uh, would not take no for an answer. She wanted that painting. She would not wait to have the painting mailed to her. She she just kind of grabbed the hold of that painting and she refused to let it go. How often have you been able to experience individuals? And I experienced this for myself. So yeah. it's not something somebody told me. How often have you had situations where you've been doing showings or you've been in an exhibit where you have people that are just so taken by your work is that they want to take the sample. They don't, they don't want to work and then they're willing to pay top dollar. Well, you know, it's, you just never know who you're going to run into and you never know what's going to be your uh, signature piece. It just so happened that the painting that you're talking about is called Grambling Legends. And it's based on the old New Orleans second line. And it's a celebration of victory over life, debt, challenges, corona, and everything in life. And it's, it represents a type of an experience that students, whether you, well, no, whether you were a student or just a passerby, anybody who had anything to do with grammar find themselves in that piece. That piece touches everybody. And it's colorful. It represents, got that big tiger there. It represents the old and the new. In, in, in 1901, whether you went in 2020, you can relate to the piece. And I was giving it away as a fundraiser for the students in Grambling. And this young lady out of California, one of the alumni, even before I can open the painting up, she offered a, a, a good deal of money for it right off the, on the spot. Yes, she they did. Were, I witnessed that. So I ended up giving that one. And by the way, I, I, I'm i still selling some lithograph from that money for the students at Grammar, and they need it now more than ever. So it's, that's it happens, like I said, that's, it happens every now and then, not very often. But this particular painting, 
it has caught on. It's, in fact, you may have seen it. I, um, I'm doing other universities now because of this piece I did with Grambling. For example, you know, LSU and Southern University, these things have taken off. You know, I think most people could relate to them. And that's the purpose. You know, I, I hadn't told you my, my philosophy as an artist. You know, I, I use my God-given artistic talent as an instrument to convey meaningful, enlightened messages of hope. And what these paintings does, they offer hope. So when we, if we get through this corona thing, it's going to be all over at some point, we continue to pray. And with this painting, it, it, it gives people some reason to be hopeful for the future. And it puts smiles on people's face. And people can relate to the painting and they can have a conversation piece with among their friends and, and, and uh, alumni buddies all across the world. And that's what this painting has done. And I think that lady picked up on that and she was just, she was just fascinated by the piece and she offered the money right there on the spot. People call me for these paintings all, almost on a daily basis. Wow, that's great. Now listen, as we wrap this thing up, Brother Triplett, now I know I know for a fact you and Dunson Coney collaborated yes. on a design yes. to commemorate the 400th year of slavery in these United States. And Will you talk a little bit about uh, that piece that you guys collaborated on and uh, uh, what the process is with that or was with that? Okay, um, yeah, we, we, we call a piece Shackles 400. And we started this, we had the idea of, of commemorating the 400 year of being in this country about a couple of years back uh, when we did a symposium down at Southern University. It was Don and another artist was with us. But Don and I really took this thing and tried to make it happen. Uh, Shackles 400, of course, you know, since 1619, back like 2019, that'll be 400 years. We're now 401 years now. Um, we want to commemorate that through our art and to use it as an educational tool to teach people that we are still in the struggle even after 400 years. And now we're seeing this thing come to pass with the George Floyd and all of these other killings. And, and believe me, you know that this thing hadn't just started. It started over 400 years ago. And there are so many incidents that are not being talked about across this country on a daily basis. Almost every city, in particular major city in this country, we see the injustices of our people especially our black men, not excluding our black women, because and, and even our Mexican brothers, because there was an incident here in West Monroe about three years ago. I only heard one report on this Mexican being shot, and he was sitting on the ground, and nobody was saying nothing in this region, and it's been about three years. I always wonder. They probably, perhaps, will never say anything about that. But that 400 shackles was to commemorate. We're still shackled in, in so many respects, we are still shackled after 400 years. We hope and pray that we can break this thing, and I think it will come to pass. But we have to teach our children and young adults the history and, to, and somehow, some way to get them to engage in conversation and to know the history because most of us don't know. And I'm, and I'm backtracking a, a little bit to go back to that Buffalo Soldier pieces that you like. I even put a current uh, June 16th, June, Juneteenth flag, I'm sorry, Juneteenth flag in those paintings to connect the past with the present. And this is kind of allegorical painting. You know, you make up some things, but you try to do that to try to teach the kids some of the past history because I've taught the history out at the, at the university. And, and it's amazing some of our kids, not just our kids, kids of all races, they don't know nothing about history. The only thing they know is Dr. Martin Luther King and Rosa Parks. Beyond that is, 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 is like foreign language. But we are so much more than that. And maybe we are taking it for granted and we talk about everything as it relates to, you know, our struggles for over 400 years. But the, but the design itself was a simple, you know, 
uh, designed with chains that unsha unshackles. Unfortunately, I don't have a, a sample with me right now, but uh, we're hoping to get these shirts out, you know, to promote it, caps and other paraphernalia to get it to the people so we'll never forget. There's a, a 16, 19 project some people did up on the, uh, in Virginia, of course, where the first slave ships came all out in, in uh, Chesapeake Bay in that area, Virginia. But, but we need to get ours out. And one of the things that I'm glad you're doing this program with us is because around here in rural Northeast Louisiana, people think we just cotton and sugar, not sugar cane, but cotton and beans. But we got guys like yourself, who's a writer. You know, we got artists here like myself and Don and a few others, not a whole bunch. Yeah, a whole bunch of brilliant master artists in the Shreveport artists that I can remember, Daniels and Dr. Pitts and all those people from years ago. But those are some of the people who I looked up to. But we're here and we're still trying to, we're standing on their shoulders and I know I am. And I'm trying to keep going to guys started. So we can continue to teach our kids and young adults the real history and most of all teaching the truth through art. Well, Brother Triplett, very, very well said. We want to thank you for, for being kind enough and being courteous enough to, uh, to accept our request to be a guest on the Nobody Asked Me Guy show. Now, uh, we, if, if some of our audience want to contact you, Brother Triplett, how might they do that? Um, you can I, I do have a website, and even though it's, it's still in the process, but of course you can call me. Or I have an email address. I can give you that. It's DarylTripletArt.com. That's the website, DarylTripletArt.com. Or you can go to DarylTrip3DArt at Yahoo.com. DarylTrip, T-R-I-P, 3DArt at Yahoo.com. That's my email address. Thank you so very much for that, Brother Triplett. Ladies and gentlemen, listen, it's been great. Please take advantage of that information that you received from Brother Triplett, because let me tell you guys, he has some of the beautifulest, greatest art in the world. I, again, am your host, uh, Melvin Casey Lars, the Nobody Asked Me Guy Show. We're normally here on Friday evenings from 7 p.m. Uh, on, and also we have a show on Sundays called Soul Sunday, which airs at 5 p.m., uh, most of the time on this station. And this Sunday, we will have none other than uh, Pastor Jerry Baldwin uh, out of uh, Ruston, and, and he'll be talking about what is the kingdom like? And you really want to tune in. Jerry Baldwin has a word for you. So ladies and gentlemen, again, we want to thank you for joining us. We appreciate all of our guests. And if you have any questions after this show, uh, please be sure to contact uh, Brother Triplett, and you can contact me if you I forgot that address at the nobody asked me guy show at gmail.com. T H E N O B O D Y A S K E D M E G U Y show S H O W at gmail.com. So, ladies and gentlemen, we want to again thank Brother Triplett for being here. Brother Triplett, if you have any parting remarks, I should have asked you that earlier, but you may have had some parting, remark, parting remarks. And if you do, please share them with us at this time. No, I'm just encouraging everybody to keep, you know, keep their heads up above water and, and stay safe, wear your mask, and continue to educate yourself on this corona deal. And let's uh, lift each other up in spirit. With that, we want to bless everyone as, as much as we can bless you because we know that God is the ultimate blesser and healer. We want to thank you for being here with us tonight. And again, we bid you good night. Brother Triplett, thank you so very much for being here. Thanks for having me.